Molly Superthorpe. Welcome to my channel, where I offer bite-sized tutorials and demonstrations in calligraphy and hand lettering, and upload a brand new video every Friday. Today I'm going to share with you some tips and techniques that I use in Procreate to really streamline my art creation process. I'm specifically going to share techniques that I use as a lettering artist with basic illustrations. Now the Procreate app is a really powerful tool and just like most powerful software, there are little hidden uh, gems built into the program that aren't always intuitive or obvious, but once you discover them, you realize just how much it can transform your workflow. So to get us started, I'm gonna talk about a popular new addition to Procreate, which is the quick menu. So I'm gonna start by showing you my quick menu setup and then show you how to customize your own for your own needs. So my quick menu is set up so that if I press any finger on the screen and hold it, I get this pop-up menu. Now what I have set up here are the six most frequently used actions that I do when I'm making art. And all of these actions, because they're here, mean that I don't have to be moving around the screen, opening other menus, scrolling for certain options, just to make those actions happen. So you can imagine just how much faster this helps me do my work. So number one is that I have programmed here my absolute all-time favorite brush. I'm gonna make a new layer here so that I can just draw a little bit and just show you as I go. Press and hold quick menu. And I'm coming here to my favorite brush, my fine calligraphy flourishing brush. So now let's say that I wanna change my brush. I'll just bring up my quick menu again and go to my second sage action, which is select brush. If I hold it for a quick second, it brings up my entire brush library. Every brush pack that I have in my library can be accessed through this mini menu now. And what I've done in my own library is create um, a, a library specifically for my favorite brushes. And I have that at the top so that when I enter this mini menu, the very first action um, or the very first selection is my favorite brush packs. And I come in here and I can select any brush now. So what if, let's say I want a monoline brush now. Well, I've selected that and I've instantly moved over to monoline. Oh, I wanna quickly go back to calligraphy. You can see how easy that is and how much faster than going into the brush menu, selecting it, going back to the brush menu, etc., etc. Next up on my quick menu is drawing assist. And this is really uh, useful for adhering to guidelines or using the symmetry guides. If you've seen any of my videos that utilize the symmetry guides, which I'll link a lot of them below, you'll know that drawing assist is crucial. So if you have a layer where drawing assist is turned on, this word assist appears right below it. And that just means if I clear this layer here, that just means that whatever guide you have set up in your canvas, if you turn on drawing guide, and then you edit, let's quickly edit drawing guide and turn on some symmetry. It doesn't matter for the sake of this video what symmetry I have on. With drawing assist on, whatever I draw gets duplicated according to my symmetry guide settings. If I tap my layer once, I can hit drawing assist again to turn it off, and now whatever I draw does not adhere to those guides. So in my own work, I do this a lot. Let's say I'll be working in symmetry and I'll be trying to draw adhering to the guides, but then I quickly need to go in and do something without the guides. Well, instead of coming over and tapping to turn off drawing assist, all I have to do is press and hold drawing assist. Now it's on. Press and hold drawing assist. Now it's off. You can see how, again, that can really streamline my workflow. Next up in my quick menu is new layer. Needless to say, this is a very common function. So I can tap that and a new layer appears. And next up or last in my own quick menu, I have layer opacity, which is again, something I use a lot, especially if I'm tracing or just layering my artwork at all. So if I go to layer opacity, you can see that the opacity slide bar appears at the top. And with my pencil or my finger, I can click and drag. And you can see that the opacity is adjusted. So how do you set up your own quick menu options? Well, first you have to make sure that your quick menu is enabled and figure out what action you want to take to make the quick menu appear. Like I said, I press and hold and that's the way I prefer to have my quick menu pop up. But if you come to your settings gear icon and hit preferences, then you have to come to gesture controls. Quick menu is one of the options in gesture controls. So you'll select the way to invoke your quick menu. 
Then you'll come over and you'll invoke it. You'll open your menu. If it's your first time using it, this is what you'll see. You'll see the default menu and it'll be called my menu, I believe. And I think it comes as defaults with all of these very popular actions. But if you want to customize them, you can create multiple quick menus. So you can tap and hold the center title menu and you can say new. Okay. Now I'm coming into this new menu and I'm tapping for a second and holding my action. And I can scroll through this long list of actions. Same with this. Let's select new layer here and let's select open layers panel there. And now when I bring up that quick menu, tap there, oh, layers panel opened. So you can create multiple quick menus for yourself too if you feel that you're inhibited by just these six options. Okay, so this next one is a real life changer for me. And I don't hear a lot of people talk about this one and I'm not sure if that's because it's a pretty hidden feature that you have to really look for or if not everyone finds it as useful as I do. But here I have a file that has multiple colors and multiple elements. And when I make files that have lots of colors and elements, I put pretty much every element on its own layer, certainly every color. And I'll put calligraphy on one layer and I'll put illustrations on other layers. So I end up with files that have lots and lots of layers. And if I want to navigate to a specific item, like let's just say this pink circle here, I can go into my layers palette and I can really look around and you can see I just have so many layers layers. And even now in this video, I don't even know, it would take me a while to find it. So in gesture controls, I can come over to layer select and I can choose one of four ways to invoke the layer selection tool. I have the first one always selected, which just means that a finger select or a finger touch will invoke layer select. So what that means is that I can just put my finger down and instead of pushing hard and holding to open quick menu, I can just hold and scrub around the screen and you're going to see that the layers that I'm hovering over all appear. And then if I just hold for a second more, if multiple layers are sort of layered on top of each other for that exact area, then it will show you the mini menu of those layers. You can navigate straight to that layer. And now I know that any drawing I do is going to be only on that layer. Now I'm going to talk for a moment about selections and you may already know this one, but it's, it's a small thing that makes a big difference. So if I come to my selection tool and I know that I just want to select, let's say these two words, because for whatever reason, I want to move them, let's say slightly to the left, let's say these three words. Okay. So I've selected them here and now I've moved over to my direct select tool so that I can adjust the size of them or adjust the spacing of them. But now I want to actually zoom out to view my whole composition because I don't know if the spacing that I'm going to do really works for the composition as a whole. Well, if you pinch right here, as you would to zoom out, it affects the, the actual transformation of that selection. And so the very small little um, tip that I have here is that you have to pinch and zoom outside of that selection and then work with the selection itself to change it, right? Kind of minor, but it can be a big deal because I know that before I learned that, I found myself deselecting, zooming out, reselecting, um, and I didn't realize that it was so easy to zoom while a selection was made. Now I want to talk about recoloring your artwork in a couple quick ways. So number one, I have here my calligraphy, okay? And it's black because when I originally drew it, it was black. But I want to change it to, let's say, the darker color that I have in my illustration. Or let's do something even higher contrast. Let's, let's do this gold that I have pre-selected here. So the quickest way to do that in a non-destructive way, which means I can preserve the original black and I'll make an editable color layer that fills it in. The quickest way to do that is with a clipping mask. So I'll come over to my layer uh, that has the calligraphy on it and I'll tap the new layer and tap it once more and select clipping mask. And you'll see that a little arrow appears on the left, which means that this layer only affects the layer below it that it's clipped into. And now with my gold there selected, and I could select any other color at this point, but on that new layer, I'll tap again and I'll say fill layer. Now this by itself isn't really a hack. I think lots of people do know this, but the cool thing is if you want to make a multicolor piece of artwork, let's say I want to change the words uh, rain and night to different colors. 
let's make a new blank layer and this will be like the let's call it the accent color layer we'll tap it once and make it into a clipping mask but instead of tapping again to fill it i'm going to use either painting or the selection tool to quickly recolor so how do i do that let's choose a very high contrast color here the painting method is pretty easy on this blank layer i will select any brush that I would think is good for painting and I can just zoom in and painting on that new blank layer remember it only affects the calligraphy layer means that I'm basically painting just the calligraphy itself if I come into this layer you'll now see that I basically painted this big sort of puddle on the page but if I unclip it that's what I painted but when I clip it again it only affects the pixels of the calligraphy and that is why I only colored the calligraphy but this can be tedious. Uh, it can be really tedious to go through and paint large amounts of accents. So we can use a really cool little hack by using the selection tool. So I'm making sure I'm on that blank layer. And I'm coming to my selection tool and choosing freehand color fill. I'm going to zoom in and start making selections of the words I want to color. So the second that I close this selection, it should turn blue. Indeed. I don't even have to remove my selection because I have add turned on so I can just go around and continue selecting and you'll see that each item gets colored in according to what I selected. Great. Now I can zoom out and I have these pops of, of color within my calligraphy and I can quickly turn them on and off here so it's a totally non-destructive edit. Likewise, I can make shapes that color fill very easily. So I'm on a blank layer now and coming to the selection tool, I can draw freehand shapes. And the second that I close the selection, it'll fill with my color. I can also use the rectangle tools and fill them. I can use the ellipse tools and fill them. And I can even remove color that way by changing from add to remove, keeping color fill on, there you see with the ellipse tool, I have been able to cut out of my selection. Pretty convenient if you're making uh, fun illustrations, let's say, that have some geometric shapes around them. One final uh, selection related technique that is really crucial to my workflow is selecting multiple layers at once. It can be helpful if you've made a ton of layers and let's say you want to group them into one group so that you can edit the group as a whole. You can select multiple layers by swiping quickly right on all the layers that you want to select. So you select them all and now I'm going to say group up at the top, but you can also use this to delete lots of layers at once. And now I have a group from what I selected and I can adjust that whole layer, I'm sorry, that whole group together as one. It's very, very convenient. Next, I wanna talk a little bit about quickly filling in selections. And I think that probably most of you know that if you drag the swatch from your color palette over and you fill any shape, it automatically fills that enclosed shape. But what if you have used a brush that is rough or blurred, then you're gonna get this little bit of blur around the edges when you fill it and it will look wonky. And either you have to go in and fill it by hand or recolor it in some other way. But there is a little trick to get around that. And it is that if you click and drag your shape and you let it fill and then you don't let go, you'll see that it starts to say color drop threshold at the top. And so again, without letting go, move across the screen and your selection is going to fill in better. Let me zoom in and do that. Do you see how now this pushed all the way up to the edge and I don't have that little pink border anymore? Now I'll do it again zoomed out and you're gonna see that if I make the threshold really big, it actually fills all the color like that on my screen. So this is an extremely helpful tool for filling in with like illustrative brushes that don't have crisp and sharp strokes. One more cool color hack is that if you've made a piece of art that has colors in it that you really love and you wanna be able to save that palette or save it in a way that you can use it again for the next piece of artwork, um, you can now very quickly automatically create a color palette. So up here in color palettes, if I hold the plus sign, you can select now also new from camera, new from file, and new from photos. 
Now, for some reason, they still don't have new from Canvas. So I can't take the file I'm looking at right now and just turn it into a palette. But there's a quick way around that. All I have to do is take my art and say share JPEG, save image. And now it saves to the photo roll on my iPad. So now that it's a photo, I can just come to the plus sign and say new from photos and select it. And immediately a palette is created using all the colors and all of the slight variations of color from this piece of artwork. I very much hope that these little tips and tricks help you in your own workflow. If there are any specific Procreate hacks or techniques that you use daily in your workflow that I didn't cover here, feel free to share them in the comments because I always like to learn uh, new ways to make the most out of this software. As always, tag me in your work, please, on Instagram so that I can see what you're up to. I always like to see what people create from my tutorials and my books and my downloads. And remember that you can have access to my free lettering toolkit resources, again, using the link below or just going to mollysletteringtoolkit.com. I'll be back next week with a new video and I'll see you then.